Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Skyrim. Unfortunately, I lost the live commentary for this one, so we're going to do a little bit of a post-commentary here. I'll watch right along with you and uh, try to prov provide some insight as to what I was doing since we lost all of my audio. Now, I'm trying to bait the mage that's up the, uh, the ramp here in this process. I, knew I'd find I don't know, obviously you saw the last episode where I couldn't even get past this point. So, I'm a little bit more cautious this time. Hoping to draw her out and get up some good work with that, but... You know, stubborn as ever. Oh. Now, at this point, I realize that I don't have my UI turned on, the user interface for the uh, health and all that, because I was trying to take a screenshot earlier. So I gotta turn that on. Now I can see that I've been hurt, but she's a little bit hurt, and then we're going to play this game, obviously, where I go back and forth, try to draw her out. Now, at this point in the actual video, I was getting pretty frustrated. I just kept like, come on, come on now. You can even see that she's being indecisive, like raising and lowering her hands. Neither of us is brave enough to come follow the other. Now, I think that, uh, let's see here. I don't know if this is when I make the push or not, but, and ideally, guys, that we won't have these, uh, post commentaries. I prefer to do a live commentary, but when I lost it, you know, there's not much choice. Looks like I shot her in the knee there. It was a good place for a joke, but hopefully I didn't make it in the real commentary either. Now, I think that maybe in this series I should do more archery. I don't think I've focused on it at all, but it's going to be helpful, especially since it's on legendary difficulty, to try to get through and to do some of that. Um, it's going to give me a little bit of distance on people, especially these mages, where when I get up close and personal, they seem to wipe me out pretty quick. I knew I'd find all right. Here we go. Finally. So that was a success. Now, I haven't rewatched this footage, and it's been about a week since I recorded it, so I don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, I do and I don't. I found some gold and jewels, which hopefully I will use to sell. Um, the necklace and the amethyst to maybe buy a new weapon. I'm clearly very scared. So this is going to help out with the pickpocketing a little bit. A free book there. The Skyrim has skill books like that strewn across the land that you can uh, pick up and read for free boosts like that. Now here I'm trying to get a uh, 24 hour rest so that I can get my uh, racial power back, that Berserk Rage. Um, that definitely helps on Legendary difficulty because you take half the damage and do double the damage so you can kind of make up for what the difficulty is doing. And you'll see me do that throughout the next this and the next episode of which I also lost the audio. So at this point, I'm ready to progress. I'm feeling safe. Considered grabbing some food, but decided not to. Now hopefully the audio levels on all this are, uh, are good enough to... I don't know, so you can hear me and hear the game well. Now that bear trap scared the life out of me. I was terrified in the actual game there. I didn't see it at all. I was looking too high up. wasn't paying attention. And it really got me there. So I quick save there because I feel like I'm about to encounter something. Beautiful little uh, waterfall there. Now 
Now it looks like I've seen something. Something hiding behind the water. And then once I realize it's the bandit chief, I'm like, okay, we better, you know, like, uh, you know, okay, we just get out of here. <laughs> Dump the arrow and go. Now, once I realize that, that one's the actual bandit chief, I think I'm gonna pop my racial ability. I uh, forgot it was already queued on there. I get blocked there. <laughs> Fail the power attack. Get lost. Try again. Just cracking on that shield. Hopefully, I can get her to not attack keeping her defenses up. I guess I haven't really noticed this as much when playing, but there's a nice distortion effect around the outsides when you're in this berserk rage. It really is a nice touch. You know, you got like the scene red. So as you can see, that I'm taking half damage but still getting wall of fire. So it's really important that I have this ability, otherwise I would not be able to make it through these fights. So there's the archer. So I think I've cleared this area now. And I also had saved my level up so I could use it in case my health was low because it gives you a full um, HP recovery and stamina and everything when you do a level up. Um, I think I'm considering taking the war axe there but decided I'm a two-handed character. I'm going to wear the boots. That'll be a nice addition to my heavy armor build. And I figured since I cleared it out I would do my level up now. So health is a smart choice <clears throat> for us this in the early game, so we can take a few more hits from those stronger enemies. And I think I end up going with the heavy armor here, just because everything else is going to be a little bit out of reach for now. And that's definitely going to help me to absorb more damage as well. So this level up was more defensive than anything else. I think I'm just going through to check my different armor ratings and see what's best for us. So at this point, I don't know whether or not I've cleared the, uh, the cave, but obviously feeling emboldened since I've already taken out the bandit chief, who was my biggest threat at the time. I figure I might as well take this, just for the sell price on it. 552 is worth quite a bit. I'll probably only get around 200 for it if I sell it, since my speech is low. And so far we're just investigating, trying to find out there's any other treasure left for us to get before I move on out of here. And then I discover that we're not alone. So his power strike is not as powerful as mine. I think I'm just gonna beat on his defense there. If they just sit in defense like that, I find that getting a little bit of damage through is better than none. My orc seems to love that headbutt move. Now I'm taking uh, ingots and things like that, and observing that because I don't have a pickaxe yet. But I'm hoping to do some smithing with this character, because it'd be nice to get some reinforced heavy armor and uh, maybe some two-handed weapons that I've made myself. I think that would be a nice addition. I always take arrows when I come across them, you never know when you're going to need them. 
And then I debate on the longbow. I take it, but I think it turns out that it's not as strong as the hunting bow. And it's not. But we can always take it and sell it later. Now, I think I've searched this chest before, and I had. I think I even said that in the original audio. Now, I'm turned around and lost at this point, looking for an exit. And I realize, oh, that's where I had the crazy mage fight. So we turn around. Hopefully we can find the exit to this place a little bit quicker. Find some more arrows. That's always good. So I think at this point, I'm going to keep heading north, um, just in the interest of trying to reach a settlement where I can sell some things and get things together. I think we decided on, I guess we'll see for ourselves here in a moment. Yeah, I think I decided Morthal, because it was our nearest city that wasn't um, Whiterun, the original. So we're going to head off in that direction. So far, we haven't made that many improvements to our character in this episode. I've <laughs> spotted a wolf. Now, this should be no problem for a character at this level. I think we should be just fine. Um, the wolves can be dangerous if you've got a pack of three of them. But a single wolf is probably going to be dealt with pretty easily. Which is the case. I get stuck in a little hole. Quite a bit of fun. <laughs> so we can see a shrine up there. And I don't think I want to go that way. Because I don't think I'm prepared to, to deal with that yet. But I just... I keep admiring how beautiful the game looks. You know, the uh, HD texture packs and all that from uh, when the game wasn't in Special Edition, they looked quite good, and you could have mods that change things, but it's nice to just have it stock look good, so then when the mods come in, they can be even better. And there are mods that you can do, but I like to play a vanilla game first before I do any modding. So we have more canine issues here. couple of wolves wanting to uh, ruin our day. As you saw there, I before I hit him with my final hit, he died uh, of the bleeding damage. So that's where that perk comes in that I got on, earlier on for the two-handed, uh, I think, battle axes. That uh, that little extra bleed damage is going to help us out quite a bit in the long run of the game, I think. Since it takes us so long to attack, getting some damage happening in between attacks is going to help when enemies are low because they could go into a down state before I can even manage to hit them again. It's an overall DPS buff. Now I don't want to mess with the giants because they'll send me into space pretty easily and I, I don't even want to get involved with that. Yeah, look at those northern lights. That looks great. You can see the rendering on the mountains far away there. Everything should be turned up to max settings, and it, it really comes through. It looks great. Now, I'm trying to find the quickest route around this mountain without going through the riverbed area. I think that'll take us longer to get around. But we've stumbled across another location. Now I'm checking out all the blood and gore outside, and I'm not sure if I want to go in, but I think we decide to. So at this point, I haven't regenerated my racial ability yet. 
So upon discovering that they're all in here, I think I'm going to try to take a couple of pot shots at them with my bow. Just to weaken them up a little bit. Now I barely missed that guy, which alerts them, them a little bit to my presence. So my sneak is increasing here, which I'm pretty fond of, because I like to sneak in the game. Yeah, I'm a two-handed, heavy, armor-wearing warrior, but, you know, if you can do a little bit of sneak and get a couple damage multipliers every now and again, it's definitely worth it. So, for instance, there we got a two times attack on that. Our archery is not very good, but we're still able to do a decent amount of damage just based on that being a sneak attack. Now, this guy doesn't notice me, which is astounding. Basically standing in the open. So I've hit the mage, and then I've whiffed, which I often do. I, I don't think that my uh, damage range is a lot higher. So I'm going to get myself right on out of that situation. I'm almost dead. I'm afraid they can come in after me. Come out after me. But it doesn't look like that's the case. So I think at this point I decide it's time to... Uh, I think I might use a couple potions here, yeah. Now, the reason I did that and then immediately went back in was because I was hoping that they would be stacked up by like, stacked up by the door there. Like sometimes they are when you leave an area and re-enter. It leaves them where they were, but that's not the case. So this is a little bit gamey and I do exploit this a little bit. I come in and out of this area, but for now I think it's fine. Um, ideally I wouldn't do that at all, but I had to get out of there. I didn't want to die in the situation in the first place, so... Steps had to be taken. And we are getting sneak out of the deal. So level progress is always a positive thing. Now we can see the mage and the archer in the distance there. I'm gonna keep trying to harass these guys and ideally take a few down while I'm in here. So we're gonna switch to our axe and take this guy the rest of the way out. Hopefully. Okay. So we've killed the one. And like I said, I exploited it a little bit. You guys can judge me for that, that's alright. But, uh, I think it's worth not dying in that situation. Now, once again, we're, I uh, appear to be resting here. You got it like 24 hours. Every 24 hours, your racial ability comes back. So I'm doing that so I can have the uh, Berserk Rage ready to go once I go back in there. That's going to save me a lot of heartache, I think. So now that we've eliminated the archer, we've only got a couple opponents left in here. We'll go ahead and collect his arrows and the rest of his equipment so we can use it for ourselves. Found you. So we've leveled up and I can use that to my advantage later on. Because with the level up, now I can get a free health up without having to use any of my very precious potions. Now we were able to quickly eliminate this guy. And the uh, iron shield would be good for us, but we don't use shields as a two-handed character. So, I didn't bother to pick it up. So I noticed they have all the smithing stuff, which I'm uh, pretty fond of. We could always use this as a place to do smithing if we can't find another. Now I don't know what I did there. 
I would maybe assign that to a key? I'm not entirely sure. So he approached me a lot faster than I thought he was going to. Ideally, I would have had the uh, axe out of that situation. Now we're getting chased down by the bandit chief. And keep in mind, this is on legendary difficulty. So, uh, there is going to be times when I just simply get destroyed. Like that, for instance. Being on legendary difficulty, you know, the enemies have bigger defense and I think they have higher attack. Either that or it just lowers our own. But it puts me in a situation where, uh, I'm gonna die a few times, but that's part of the fun, is figuring out how to play a game I've played many hours of in a different way to be more successful. So this time, I think I've decided to lure the one out and face him alone. there and then I think he just annihilates me. So I think I utilize my level up here, yeah, and I do, to get a little, you know, a refresh on my health and stamina. Then I go into Juggernaut 2 to get even more defense. Now what I should have done is pop that ability before he hit me the first time. So I go all in here. So what we really want is that axe he's carrying. I think that's a steel one and it's going to be a lot better for us than our current iron one. See, but his damage being so high, it allows him to eliminate us when we're nearly at half health still, with one power attack. So we gotta come up with a different strategy on how to beat this guy. So this time, I'm a little frustrated, I decided to just go all in. So we do the same move we did last time. And we go into the Juggernaut there. So I shouldn't be trading blows like that with him. Because he can do much more damage than me. And he takes a lot less than I do. Now he's retreating to his archer there. Which is going to give him an advantage. He's got one anyway. And see, there's that elimination, even on high health. So maybe my monkey brain will learn this time and will change things up a little bit. didn't learn a thing. I tried the same exact technique again. But trust me, we will get past this point. Now it does seem repetitive to watch now. However, in the moment, learning and adapting as I go with live commentary, it was a lot more fitting. Um, because I don't know what my plan was right now, watching it back a week later. Okay, so here's where I lure him. I finally decide that we need to take this a little different route and do things one step at a time. So, I'm not trying to hit him at any of these points. I might be now, but previously I was just trying to get him to come out of behind there without alerting the bandit chief. So now we should be able to take this guy down relatively easily. He does heal himself. 
But he also backs himself into a corner. So we're able to take him out. Now we did lose quite a lot of health doing that. But we quick save that. Because I want to make sure that I don't have to defeat him ever again. I'm going to take this pickaxe. Because I have the suspicion that there might be something to farm in here. And I'm going to take some food and try to heal that way. Before I get into the encounter with the bandit chief. So I'm going to take some wine here and attempt to see if that increases strength or anything like that to see if I couldn't uh, maybe get a damage advantage. But it restores some stamina but lowers its return so I didn't figure that was necessary. This is very good though, the Mammoth Cheese Bowls and I could use those in the fight to help myself out. Now one thing I wish in Skyrim is that food scaled with your level. So as you went, maybe the Mammoth Cheese would restore more health, or potentially give you stronger benefits. Or maybe even a whole big cooking mechanic in the game that isn't oversimplified like it currently is. Now my arrow bounces off the wood there. I'm not sure how that happens. There's some collision issues in the game. That's okay. So at this point, I'm trying to switch to the Iron Battle Axe, but uh, oftentimes the game won't allow me to change things on that quick menu. It's a slower, slower process. So I think he might be able to take me out again, but I'm going to throw my level up in now. Increase my defense, get a full heal, and go at it again. So if we are able to defeat this guy, we're going to be in a much better situation. He's got better armor and weapons than I currently do. And he's basically got the same build. So he's a two-handed, heavy armor guy. And if we can take his uh, equipment... Oh, look at that. That was a terrible miss. Alright. So we've taken him out. And we're going to give ourselves a little bit of an upgrade here. So that steel battle axe is going to do a ton more damage. You know, we're going to read his journal for some reason. I think they, they're having problems with the giants. So we're going to upgrade the steel kit here. Armor, gauntlets, and shin boots. So we're going to be in a much better defensive position. And we have a badass new axe. So we're ready to roll. I figured while I still had the Berserk Rage, I might as well come and take this guy out. So we've cleared this whole area out, which, you know, these just seem like two minor bandit camps right now, but the leveling that I got is going to help us when we do other quests. Granted, things in Skyrim do level with you, but, uh, you know, it's a bit of a give and take. So you're better equipped and more specialized, so the things you use do more damage, but also the enemies will be stronger as well. So if you don't specialize, you can really be in some big trouble. For instance, if you were to go for some sort of pacifist build and you're just trying to do talking and stuff without much combat um, and spellcasting, you're going to be in a bad situation as enemies level up. Because they're going to be able to take you out really quick if you don't have specialized armors and things. And I've broken my lockpick. That's alright. We've got 13 other ones.
so at this point, I'm looking to upgrade a little bit. No, I don't have enough to make anything at this point. So I decided to rather to go to the uh, grind wheel and upgrade my axe. Which is only going to give us one extra point of damage. But, uh, you know, every point counts. If you're at 23 and you go to 24, it's a, it's a decent upgrade as far as things go. So we get another one-handed increase here. Now that's just good for me for level progress, and not so much because I'm going to plan on actually using one-handed. But any level ups are a positive forward step there. But this is essentially where I call it the end of the episode. Uh, we take a seat, and then we're basically done. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.